All right, welcome back to Doctrines 2. We're finishing up today uh, our study on Christology. Uh, I want to finish up with these uh, final things about Christ as prophet, priest, and king, the or the offices of Christ. Uh, I want to talk about these things because there's a lot of things that are, are rather confusing about uh, Jesus Christ as a prophet, as a priest, uh, and as a king. Uh, and I want to point these point this out, first of all, to, to, to say that Jesus Christ fulfills all three of these uh, Jewish offices. These are offices from the Old Testament that were necessary uh, for God to work with his people Israel. Uh, as the prophets were to be God's mouthpiece to Israel, to speak on his behalf uh, to his people Israel. The priests were uh, that mediary between pe the, the people and God, uh, how they were to come to God uh, through sacrifices, uh, through that mediary, the high priest, and then also as king, that, he is the, that Jesus Christ is the rightful king of, of Israel in the line of David. Uh, so let's talk about these three offices uh, and not only how he fulfills these offices uh, of the Old Testament uh, in Israel, but then what does that mean for today? What does that mean to his uh, ministry today? We'll talk about that. Uh, and then in our final video today, we'll be looking at uh, how we as uh, fellow heirs or joint heirs with Christ are to be a royal priesthood uh, we are to be the mouthpiece of God, so we we become uh, uh, we share in uh, Christ's offices in that way. Uh, but let's look at these. Each video we'll talk about each one of these. Uh, so today, right now, we're going to look at the prophet aspect. Uh, but first of all, notice these offices are always distinct from one another in the Old Testament, with no one uh, no one leader filling all three offices at once. The only person in human history that can be said to have fulfilled all three of these offices at once uh, would be Adam, uh, only because he was the mediatorial king uh, of earth. God gave him rule over earth. Uh, Adam was that preacher of righteousness we see in the Old Testament where uh, after they were taken out of the garden, he's the one who is uh, leading his family uh, and speaking to his family on the behalf of God, and also the priest as bringing his family to God. Uh, and I guess in that way, uh, the 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 pre-flood uh, antediluvian uh, patriarchs could be said to fulfill these offices. However, within Israel, these offices were never. Uh, joined together in one person. For instance, Moses, of course, was uh, a prophet, but he did not serve as the priest, nor did he serve as a king. Uh, let's say, then, what about the first prophets? Samuel. Wasn't Samuel also a priest? Yes, he was, and Samuel did serve that function as both prophet and priest. However, he did not serve as king. He was the one who anointed King Saul. Uh, what about David? Wasn't David also a prophet? He wrote the book of Psalms. Uh, and the answer is no, he was not a prophet. He was not listed amongst the prophets. Uh, Saul could perhaps be considered uh, as listed amongst the prophets, uh, but did not, did not serve as priest. Uh, and David uh, always had a prophet with him, whether that was Nathan or Gad uh, or, or other prophets. Uh, also had a priest who was always with him uh, in Abiathar and uh, and the like. So we see throughout Israel's history. Then there's there's a priest, there's a prophet, and there's a king. Uh, from that point on, there are all three different people fulfilling those roles uh, of prophet, priest, and king. Uh, it was understood though that when the Messiah comes, when the when the the one comes to replace all of that, he would be. He was prophesied as being the prophet who was to come. He is the. Uh, he would be the one to mediate between God and man, uh, and he would be the king of Israel, uh, the Messiah. But there was much confusion in the intertestamental period, in the period leading up to the Gospels, 
uh, of whether this Messiah would fill all three of these roles. In John chapter 7, they come and you know, some are saying that, oh, he's the prophet who is to come. He's the prophet like Moses. Uh, but then others said, no, he's the Christ. Uh, there was much confusion as to whether or not he would be, uh, would serve would serve all three of these roles. Uh, and th the greatest confusion was how could he serve as high priest and also as king since the high priest had to come from uh, from Aaron's line, which would have been the tribe of Levi, and also come from the tribe of Judah uh, to be king from the line of uh, from the line of Judah. So, how could he be both? Uh, in order to fulfill those roles, he would have to come from those different tribes. Uh, we'll talk about those when we get to those videos of priest and king. But let's talk a little bit more about him as prophet. As prophet, Christ reveals God to us and speaks God's words to us. A prophet is uh, the spokesman of God. He says, thus saith the Lord. And throughout the Old Testament, the prophet was someone who, uh, who not only spoke for God, the very words of God, had God's were revealed to him directly, uh, and then spoke that word to the people of Israel, always to the people of Israel, uh, and uh, or for the people of Israel, and uh, always giving that message, uh, uh, thus saith the Lord. So, is Christ a prophet? Well, uh, Moses predicted in Deuteronomy chapter 18 that God would raise up a prophet like himself. Uh, he says, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God. And the Lord said to me, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Uh, and the people understood that this prophet was to come. That's why there's much debate. You know, was Jesus the prophet? Was he Elijah? Was he the Elijah who was to come? Uh, there was much debate into the life of Jesus. Uh, but first of all, we need to understand Jesus did claim to be the second Moses, the prophet who was to come. He claims it here, uh, Matthew 13, he claims to be a prophet. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown and in his own household. Uh, in fact, he says this in all four Gospels, uh, that he is, in fact, a prophet. Uh, Luke 13, he says, nevertheless, I, go, uh, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. So, and this is just after he's also said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets. And he's, of course, prof uh, prophesying his own death, that he would die just like the prophets. You killed the prophets, you will kill me also. Uh, uh, Jesus functioned as the second Moses, that prophet who was to come. John 8 he says, I have much to say to you uh, about you and much to judge, but he who has sent me is true, and I declare to, to the world that I have heard from him. He was claiming to have a direct word from the Father, from the Lord, uh, and is proclaiming that to you. That's the function of a prophet. John chapter 12, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment what to say, and what to speak. Therefore, every word that Jesus spoke could be said, thus saith the Lord. He is a, He's functioned as a prophet. Even unbelievers see Jesus as that second Moses, the prophet who was to come. The woman at the well, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Luke, 17, or Luke chapter 7, Fear sees them all, and they glorify God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. <clears throat> and so, uh, even unbelievers, these are people, these are not necessarily people who are believing on Jesus, they're just proclaiming this. He is a great prophet. Uh, notice also, his words uh, were accompanied by miracles, or by signs, that prophets were to have those signs that accompanied their words to prove that their words were from God. Uh, Nicodemus says to Jesus in John chapter 3, uh, Rabbi, we know that you come from God because no one could do these things except he be from God. 
Uh, no one can perform these signs unless he is from God. Jesus was declared by the apostles to be that second Moses, uh, the prophet who was to come. Acts chapter 3, verse 22, Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from, from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you, and it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. Uh, Peter goes on to, 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 to denote that this is, in fact, Jesus that he's talking about. Okay? Jesus still functions as that second Moses, the prophet who was to come. In John chapter 1, verse 17, For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. Just like Moses gave the law as a prophet, the word coming through Moses from God to the people, the law, Jesus Christ uh, is in the vein of Moses, just like Moses, only instead of it, the law, Jesus Christ communicates to us grace and truth. Hebrews chapter 1, long, long ago and many times, many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So in his function as the word of God itself, uh, in John chapter 1, the logos, he is the very word of God and so functions as a prophet in that way. Uh, that's all we have on prophet. Uh, we'll see on the next video how Jesus Christ is the priest.